What is going on, you guys? Hope you're having a great day, morning, noon, night, whatever it be for you. Hope you're having the best day you could possibly be having right now. So, guys, today we're going to be getting into some new content, kind of similar, but kind of not. It's Dragon Ball Z because it has a character from Dragon Ball Z, but we've never done this content before. And I have had a subscriber that has been asking me to do this from the very, very beginning. And I've kind of put it off for a little bit because I was worried about doing other things. But then he told me who was fighting. And guys, let me tell you, it's one of my favorite characters. Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan, versus one of the Earth's mightiest defenders, the Hulk. The Hulk versus the legendary Super Saiyan. So, let's go ahead and get into this for you guys. And before we get into it, let's um, let's go ahead and hop on down here. Let's you know hit the like, subscribe button. Let's let's get to a thousand, guys. We're all we're we're like a hundred hundred off. Let's get to a thousand. Let's blow past that because his power level is rising. Let's see if we can get it to rise along with Broly's power level. So, guys. Without further ado, death battle, Broly versus the Hulk. Ready? As primal as the ground we walk on and the air we breathe, anger can keep us alive or doom us forever. Well, on that fun note, let's jump into our season finale. First up is the Incredible Hulk, Marvel's mean green world-breaking machine. Fighting machine. Then there's Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop it there and just mm, say my prediction. I'm going to say Broly's going to win. Because I think he's going to win. Young Bruce Banner was a genius and the son of nuclear physicist Brian Banner. Who was just the absolute shittiest dad ever. Complete with mom murdering and super baby slapping. Naturally pretty distraught, Bruce's trauma due to parental abuse internalized itself as a second personality. An angry childlike brute that just wanted to be left alone. Even with that angry shadow in his head, Bruce grew up to be a leader in the study of gamma radiation. So like a total nerd who probably got I'm beat up all the it. time. He had that covered. During a gamma bomb test, Bruce was caught in the blast zone and absorbed enough radiation to, well, die. Except he kind of didn't. Well, not permanently. Instead, the bomb opened a door that let Bruce's alternate personality step into the world. Go. Thus, using his anger, Bruce Banner transformed into the Incredible Hulk. The Hulk is one of the strongest Mother Hubbers in all of Marvel. He can lift a 150 billion ton mountain, shatter asteroids twice the size of Earth, leap into orbit from the ground, and even mess with the fabric of reality by punching. Whatever a time storm is, you bet your ass he can punch it and break time. The Hulk's absurd power is tied to his rage. The angrier he gets, the stronger he becomes. And according to Bro, almighty two. gods like the Beyonder, the dude's got no known upper limit. Though to be fair, his body can't always keep up and will revert to Banner under too much pressure or too many puppies. Emotions like rage That's are governed by an ball. area of the brain known as the hypothalamus, which controls Bruce's transformation. If it's damaged, his life could be put in jeopardy, like when Hawkeye pierced it with a special arrow Bruce himself designed. Good thing the Hulk's a total tank who can keep fighting for days on end. Nothing short of literal gods are strong enough to take him down. When he does take damage, his body can heal almost instantly, even if his flesh has been vaporized or he's been cut into literal pieces. The Hulk can adapt to any environment imaginable, whether that's just straight up right, holding well, that, energy or surviving the depths of space. Bit. He's even battled the warrior god Thor, who has thousands of years of combat experience and is fast enough to cross the universe in about five seconds, nearly 300 quadrillion times the speed of light. No wonder the world's so scared of him. He's a green apple flavored behemoth of destruction with the mind of a cranky four-year-old. While the classic savage Hulk persona may be a childish brute, there are several, maybe even thousands of other personalities cooped up within Banner's shattered psyche. 
Joe Fixit is a street smart bouncer, Doc Green is a super genius, and the Devil Hulk is the father figure Bruce never had. It's like an all-you-can-eat Hulk emporium in Bruce's brain. We got your Dark Hulk, Mindless Hulk, Hulk Squared, and Claw, which is basically just Claw. Sad Hulk. It's kind of dumb. Despite seeing his human half as weak, Hulk and Bruce would finally unite against a cruel, uncaring world under a new persona. The Green Scar. He brought a world war to Earth and tore the superhero community a new asshole. And by finally letting go of puny banner, the Hulk became the unstoppable force everyone's always feared. A world breaker. World is underselling it. The Savage Hulk once obliterated an entire universe with a thunderclap and bloodied Hyperion with a single punch. The same Hyperion who survived the collision of two universes unscathed. Which begs the question, how much more powerful is the Hulk at his maximum? <clears throat> uh, this one's all on me, Wiz. So, Hulk was once with this chick, Umar, ruler of the Dark Dimension. Spooky. Hulk could only match her strength for six minutes, but he made up for it in round two when he came back as the Green Scar and kept Hulk smashing for hours. It's likely they went until dawn. That's a 12-hour session of Hulk smashing at most. My man. Well, that would make the Hulk Green Scar 120 times down. stronger than the Savage Hulk. Multiplying that by the energy of the two colliding universes would yield 960 duovigintillion joules. That's just a ridiculous number. All that from a single battle? Battle? Oh, sweet summer child whiz. That's not the kind of smashing I meant. You've got to be kidding me. I think I just invented a new field of science. The science of the f***. Now, you might be thinking this gamma stuff is nuts, and you're right, because it's Satan magic! Satan magic! Gamma is actually directly connected to energy from hell, drawn from Marvel's ultimate satanic being, the one below all. By using his powers, the Hulk is literally channeling the devil. It's also what kept him alive all these years. Okay. Every time Bruce dies, his soul is sent to hell and can resurrect. Once returned to the world, his body will heal from whatever killed him. The dude literally can't die. And after a journey into the lowest plane of hell, the Hulk even faced off against the one below all and the ghost of his father. In the greatest therapy session of all time, he thunderclapped those two assholes to smithereens! Talk about cathartic! From one man with crippling daddy issues to another! Well done, sir! What else can you say but incredible? Mediocre. The Saiyans, a brutal alien race of interstellar conquerors. And giant monkey men! These famous warriors are defined by three things. Their tenacity, their pride, and their rage, which fuels their world-destroying power. And no Saiyan can get even close to as pissed off as Broly. Ah! Despite being of low birth, the infant Broly was considered a prodigy by Saiyan scientists due to his impossibly high power level of 10,000. Enough to survive a planetary explosion. What? Over 9,000? Alright, uh, I'm sorry, I got it out of my system. Anyway, baby Broly was growing up nice and happy until he was driven insane by baby Goku's incessant crying. Alright guys, gotta stop it there just as a little bring back. Do y'all like the old school Broly better or do you like the new school Broly better? Because personally, I like the I like the more demonic way he looks in the original, but I do like the backstory they've given him in the newer one. But I I wish they would have added Pantera into the new transformation cuz that would have made it even cooler. Continue. Now, everyone complains that this is the lamest backstory ever, but have you played Yoshi's Island? Yeah. Ah! No, make it stop! That's the original story, but with the new movie, that's no longer canon. However, despite developing different personalities, both of these Brolies are essentially the same character in different situations. The 2018 one is our primary source here, but we'll look at the original and similar Saiyans like Kale for more info. Oh, Whether it be shit. jealousy for his own son or genuine fear of Broly potential, Vegeta, the king, not the prince, abandoned Broly to a hellish backwater planet to die, with only his father Paragus as company. Just in time for Vegeta to get nuked! 
the planet, not the king. Well, I guess the king too. All thanks to the alien tyrant, Frieza. Nice job getting rid of your crazy strong Saiyan, baby. Idiot. Ironically, after decades of isolation, Broly and Paragus were found by Frieza and drafted into his army to eliminate the Saiyans on Earth, Goku, and Vegeta. The prince, not the planet, or the king. Thing is, Broly's not like the angry Saiyans. This guy's a gentle giant who would rather play with his big green alien dog than fight anybody. Paragus wow. molded Broly into a deadly warrior whether he liked it or not. Like most Saiyans, Broly can harness Ki, or one's inner life force, as an energy to enhance his physicality. Or fire it from his hands in a super laser beam! Broly's bread and butter is his eraser cannon, a green fastball that'll cross thousands of miles in seconds and vaporize planets. He can barf lasers with his gigantic roar, shower the landscape with blaster meteor, or just straight murder people with his gigantic orgasm. Gigantic Omega Storm? Oh, that makes more sense. Sense. I'm gonna rename my dick that. Mm -hmm. His most powerful technique, though, is a small key bolt that Broly can feed to rapidly grow in size and consume entire worlds. The Omega Blaster. Broly's arsenal isn't just blowing stuff up, though. He can use his key for flight, telekinesis, and paralysis. Despite being stuck in the space boonies all his life, he's an adaptable fighter who can match seasoned veterans. Basically, he learns as he fights. And while most Saiyans get stronger every time they almost die, the Brolmeister's strength is tied to his emotions. AKA, the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. Hmm, doesn't that sound familiar? These power boosts are so great, he can match transformations like the Super Saiyan without even needing to transform. Isn't but it don't worry, the, he can do that too. State. His wrath state roids him up and makes him as strong as a Saiyan great ape without all the fur or the shedding. Much to Frieza's chagrin though, Broly had never learned to unlock Super Saiyan and could not compete with Goku and Vegeta's stronger forms. Solution? Murder Broly's dead to get him to transform. <laughs> Despite the physical abuse he suffered at his father's hands, Paragus was still the only family Broly had, and losing that drove him over the edge. That's basically what happened to me when my dad lived, except I turned into a super alcoholic. Although Broly didn't turn into a typical Super Saiyan. You're welcome. Broly's new form was actually a Super Saiyan C type. This is an unleashed version of the repressed Super Saiyan A type, which are both precursors of the B type. Eddie? You're going out for cigarettes again? Okay, I'll see you when you get back. Goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. Hey, what? Are you paying attention? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Super Saiyan Vitamin C form has the perfect energy control and let him wail on Frieza for over an hour. And this time I mean wail as in fight. Um, right. Broly's power was so immense, it even made Goku of all people turn tail and run. Goku was able to clash with Lord Beerus with enough force to potentially destroy all of Universe 7, a humongous cosmic structure shown in this symbolic model. Making the Dragon Ball Universe nine times larger than our own. Based on this, the shockwaves from their clash propagated 240 quadrillion times faster than light. And after that, Goku became that powerful in his base form. Imagine how much stronger he was at Super Duper Pooper Scooper Saiyan. Or when fused with Vegeta into the almighty Gogeta, a being many times more powerful than the sum of his parts. Broly got into a dick measuring contest with a friggin' Super Saiyan squared and shattered reality. And at the peak of his rage, he became the warrior of myth, destined to appear once every thousand years. The legendary Super Saiyan. As a broccoli-haired freak, legendary Broly's power is so great that he needs to constantly let it out or else he might self-destruct. I guess you could say his power is... MAXIMUM! He's easily among the strongest foes Goku's gone up against. That includes beings capable of shaking an infinite void just by powering up, or merging with the universe and affecting alternate timelines. In his original timeline, the Brawl survived his energy exploding out of him all at once, and in canon he took dozens of attacks from Gogeta Blue without any visible damage after fighting for hours. His power comes at a cost, though. In his Berserker state, Broly is There's wide open against an is. opponent who's just as strong, but far more skilled. And after taking enough damage, his rage will hit its limits, and his power will fizzle out quick. He can even get knocked into weaker forms. 
Broly did lose his fight with Gogeta fair and square. But with new friends at his side to support him and a new rival to teach him to temper his fury, the lonely Saiyan outcast finally got what his father could never give him, a family. Aww. But that means he has even more to lose, so watch out because this Super Saiyan's temper is legendary. But Broly, you can call me Kakarot. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you want some more earth-shattering action, check out Wonder Woman 1984. Hey, spiky hair man! What's this puny planet? You scared them away. You are making me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. Show me. Better enjoy it while you got it, boy. Cause he's gonna be coming back harder than ever. Good fight so far. Hope is just incredible. Hope is immortal. <laughs> you are monster? No, the devil. I don't think you've met him. What I tell it's you, my boy Broly news. gonna win. Local area Saiyan literally too angry to die. The Hulk had numerous advantages over Broly. He was far more experienced, slightly faster, and potentially smarter depending on which Hulk was in charge. 
But since the Hulk's fight for control in Bruce's mind, it wasn't guaranteed he'd get one of the geniuses. Still, his healing factor was nuts. Broly wasn't going to put him down with anything less than complete annihilation. Fortunately for Broly, compared to but his unbelievable power, the Hulk came up short. I know what you're thinking. Hulk could destroy a universe 120 times over, while Goku could only manage a lowly nine. Ah, uh, but that was base Goku's base strength. Goku. Broly's maximum, no pun intended, was far greater. Let's lay down some numbers. As a legendary yeah. Super Saiyan, Broly was stronger than Super Saiyan Gogeta and took hits from Gogeta Blue without even bleeding. Based on the Daisenshu, the blonde Super Saiyan 3 form is about 400 times greater than Goku's base. Applied to Goku's new base in Dragon Ball Super, he would already be 30 times more powerful than World Breaker Hulk. And that's before factoring in Super Saiyan God Blue so and Gogeta, which are way stronger than Super Saiyan 3. With this in mind, legendary Super Saiyan Broly is thousands, possibly millions of times stronger than the World Breaker we've seen. While the Hulk's yep. strength can keep increasing, so will Broly's. And Broly's it's unlikely he'd be able to catch faster. up before being overwhelmed. After all, there have been multiple times when the strain on Hulk's body turned him back into Banner. With that big of a power difference, there's no way the same wouldn't happen here. Even stuff like breaking space and time is nothing new to Broly and other Dragon Ball characters. And don't misunderstand the Hulk's encounter with the one below all. There's no evidence he directly overpowered actual Satan, just dispersed his cloudy avatar. Hulk even said he was just doing that to buy time. Broly's flight allowed him greater maneuverability and area control, plus he could attack at a distance with key. When Hulk did close that gap, Broly's force field and paralysis protected him up close. And it's unlikely Hulk could land a lucky fatal blow, considering Broly took hits from Gogeta Blue, who's millions of times stronger than the World Breaker. You get the idea. That leads us to our last and most important question. Could Broly bypass Hulk's immortality to put him down and take the win? Surprisingly, yes. Whenever the Hulk or Bruce die, his healing factor kicks in to fix whatever wound killed him in the first place. Meaning he still needs some element of his physical body He's that can have heal itself in order to come back to life. The hypothalamus is key to this. Once it was destroyed by Hawkeye and his special arrow, Bruce took months to come back from the dead. With Broly's incredible power, there was no doubt he could vaporize Hulk and leave nothing left to heal. Like basically every Dragon Ball Z fight ever. The Hulk was an incredible opponent, but the legendary Super Saiyan's boundless power, arena control, range of techniques, and Saiyan rage spelled the end for the not-so-jolly green giant. This incredible fight was insane! In the winner Saiyan. is Broly. Woo! Alrighty, guys. So, my prediction came true. I hope, you know, I hope your guess was right, but... The GOAT, Broly, one, destroyed the Hulk, literally vaporized him. Can't beat that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hulk. Broly, it's, it's just better. Now, I'm really glad I reacted to that, guys. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was kind of put off from Death Battle quite a while ago, and that's, that's kind of why it took me so long to react to this. Um, I'm pretty sure the last Death Battle I watched was, like, probably like before battle of gods came out when they did superman versus goku and needless to say at that point in time goku did not come on on top if i remember correctly but i do think that they actually did an updated death battle with goku versus superman so if y'all like this if you like this kind of content you guys i'll definitely check that out but I'm going to let you know, guys, if Goku doesn't freaking win this time, I'm going to be so mad. But with that, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Hope you had a great time sitting here checking this out with us. And always, guys, make sure you have a great rest of your day. Peace, love, happiness to you. Before you head out, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Help me out tremendously. And always, guys, be easy.